An updated DualSense controller may be in the works. Sony may partner with more Korean developers. PlayStation reveals the winners of the Partner Awards. And Microsoft has no plans on bringing Game Pass to PlayStation. All that and more in today's PlayStation news. Let's get to them. Sony appears to be working on an upgraded version of the DualSense controller, as revealed by a recently discovered patent online. The patent outlines a predictive assistant feature utilizing machine learning to monitor a player's performance, and selectively light up button faces, analog sticks, or triggers on the controller when assistance is needed. The patent also mentions a touchpad on the controller that doubles as a display to provide button hints, similar to a previous patent that appeared in September. This is just a patent, so none of this is guaranteed to happen, but it shows Sony is actively working on improving accessibility features for players. The one thing that would be worrying is the battery life for a controller like this, since the DualSense only has a like bar and it doesn't last long. Sony's recent collaborations with Korean developers and publishers, including Shift Up and NCSoft, may not be the end of its partnership in the region. About six months ago, reports indicated that Sony was exploring opportunities with emerging studios in Korea, and while deals with Shift Up and NCSoft were anticipated, the initial report also suggested potential investments in three other studios, Perla Viz, known for Black Desert, NeoWiz, developer of Lies of P, and Come to Us, creator of Summoner's War. The move can be seen as a response to Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard, although Sony has a history of seeking partnerships in emerging markets such as China. Earlier this year, for example, Sony also announced the India Hero project to support local game development teams. There are no official announcements about this speculated collaboration, but it remains a possibility as Sony seeks to secure content amid the constant acquisitions in the industry. Which team-ups would you like to see Sony be a part of? Share with us in the comments. Speaking of PlayStation Partners, SIE held this year's PlayStation Partner Awards, recognizing the best-selling games in the Asian region over the past year. Here are the winners. First up, the top 5 in the User's Choice Award, the only voted category, included Armored Core 6, Resident Evil 4, Final Fantasy 16, Persona 5 Royal, and Hogwarts Legacy. The special award for Western games with the highest sales in the region, or Asian games with top accessibility features including VR was for Hogwarts Legacy, Street Fighter 6, and Resident Evil Village VR mode. Highlighting the top Asian developed games with top sales worldwide, the Partner Award was given to Armor Core 6, eFootball 2023, Wolong Fallen Dynasty, Elden Ring, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion, Street Fighter 6, and Sonic Frontiers. Finally, the Grand Award for the highest sales worldwide was given to Genshin Impact, Resident Evil 4, and Final Fantasy 16. Capcom swept the awards with 5 wins, followed by Square Enix and From Software with 3, WB Games and Sega Atlus with 2 each. Congrats to all of the winners! Stick till the end as we have more news that broke from the event on future Resident Evil remakes from Capcom and an Elden Ring DLC update. Do you remember the Horizon Play and Plan program that launched with Forbidden West in February last year? The initiative launched with Horizon Forbidden West and promised to plant a tree for every person who unlocked the Reach the Dawn story trophy, which unlocks after completing the tutorial. Sony Interactive Entertainment and Guerrilla Games have shown the result of their environmental initiative, which has successfully planted over 600,000 trees globally. Supported by the UN Environment Program Play for Forest and part of the Playing for the Planet Alliance, the project has also contributed to the restoration of approximately 1,800 acres of indigenous lands and wildlife habitats. Aloy's Forest Project, inspired by the storyline of Horizon Forbidden West, emphasizes the importance of addressing challenges like nature preservation, biodiversity, and climate change. Naughty Dog President Neil Druckmann reflects on the divisive reactions to The Last of Us Part II's plot three years after its release, acknowledging fan reactions. Despite the controversy, Druckmann said they are proud of the game and stated that its lasting impact is for fans to decide. While some didn't like the game, some others have already shared how the game influenced their lives, inspiring the studio to continue crafting impactful narratives. But he also hopes to hear new feedback from new players who experienced The Last of Us Part II for the first time with the upcoming remaster when it launches for PS5 in January next year. 
Regarding The Last of Us 3 and the multiplayer game, Drogman recognizes fans really want to get some news about them, but offers no comment on their status while confirming quote-unquote other projects in development. There's more on Microsoft CFO Tim Stewart who said they want Game Pass and first-party games on every screen that can play a game. He also explained why they are no longer competing against PlayStation in console sales. Speaking at the Wells Fargo 2023 TMT Summit, Stuart explained that Xbox no longer sees hardware sales as the primary indicator of success for the brand. Microsoft stopped announcing console sales a while ago, focusing instead on content and services. Stuart said the emphasis on content and services represents a strategic move, emphasizing the importance of platforms like Game Pass for Xbox's future in the evolving gaming landscape. Speaking on Game Pass, just a day after Stuart gave these comments, Xbox boss Phil Spencer spoke to Windows Central, correcting his fellow executive. Spencer said we have no plans to bring Game Pass to PlayStation or Nintendo, it's not in our plans. Microsoft may say they don't compete but Xbox consoles are still in stores and they keep content exclusive to boost the console and Game Pass, while Sony has a similar service. So they are still competing in several ways, which is why I said in the previous episode that I don't see Game Pass on either PlayStation or Nintendo unless there's a huge shift on the gaming business. Do you think Game Pass could be on other consoles one day? Share your predictions in the comments. Larian Studios has launched Patch 5 for Baldur's Gate 3, addressing slowdown issues and adding substantial content, like a new playable epilogue with 3,589 lines of dialogue, offering closure to players' journeys as they explore the camp six months post a story, bidding farewell to party members. Patch 5 also introduced two game modes, Honor mode increasing difficulty, a custom mode allowing a customized experience, and enhanced inventory management. This latest patch also includes the studio's efforts to optimize the game for the Xbox Series S, which leads to performance improvements on all platforms including PS5. Director of Publishing Michael Dows commented on the changes via Twitter, suggesting this optimization is the least exciting aspect of the update. Baldur's Gate 3 Patch 5 comes at a 30GB download, but requires 130GB of free space for installation. Now let's go for a round of quickfire gaming news. Rockstar Games has confirmed the release date for the highly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6 debut trailer and it's next Tuesday, December 5th at 9am Eastern. The company had said the trailer would be revealed this December as the studio celebrates its 25th anniversary, there was a speculation it could appear at the Game Awards, but GTA is so big it can stand on its own. What is your hype level for the first GTA 6 trailer? Let us know in the comments. Bungie launched a Destiny 2 $15 starter pack that ended up removing less than 24 hours later after facing backlash from the community. The bundle featured all their exotic weapons and cosmetic items, which people thought were so par in comparison to previous bundles. Bungie acknowledged the negative feedback by removing the DLC, stating it didn't bring joy to players. Blizzard appears to be exploring potential prices and rewards for Diablo 4's upcoming expansion, Vessel of Hatred, through a leaked survey. The survey presents four price tiers, $50, $70, $80 and $100, each offering different bonuses including early access to major features, extra stash space and exclusive gear. These prices are not final but fans are concerned with how high they are and the offering of early access to major feature a whole season ahead of anyone else. Cyberpunk 2077 is getting yet another update on December 5th, introducing a fully functional metro system with 19 stations across 5 lines, with the option to fast forward the trip. The update also includes the ability to listen to the radio while on foot, more interactions with romantic partners, additional chases and replayable car races, accessibility options and improved boss fights. Remedy Games has hinted at the addition of a new Game Plus mode to Alan Wake 2 this month. The game's official Twitter account shared the teaser image with Alan Wake pointing his flashlight at a wall with the text New Game Plus, and the caption New Month, New Game Plus. They didn't share more details, so expect this to be official announced very soon. WWE 2K24 has been rated in Brazil for PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series and PC. 
The yearly entry is expected to follow the same road to WrestleMania as the previous entry 2K23, with a reveal in January and launch in March. Just the fact of the game appearing in a rating board hints at a similar release scale. Sega Studio Creative Assembly will refocus on its strength in offline real-time strategy games after the cancellation of the online shooter Hyenas due to concerns about the game's long-term competitiveness and user satisfaction. The movie is part of Sega's broader structural reform in its consumer entertainment division, emphasizing a return to each studio's strength. Sadly, this move comes after several other project cancellations and job losses, as confirmed by Sega President and CEO Haruki Satomi. Next, we have some rumors on what will be shown at the Game Awards from insider Jeff Grubb in his latest Game Mess podcast via Idle Sloth on Twitter. According to Grubb, the show will focus on a lot of new IP and cool stuff from third-party publishers. Some of the games he thinks will be there are the Elden Ring DLC, a Jurassic Park game, and Dragon Age. Another game that might be there is Final Fantasy XVI with its upcoming DLC, with Clive Rossfield, Japanese actor, hinting at a December announcement with either Yoshida or someone else from Creative Business Unit 1 at the Game Awards. As mentioned, there's a chance for the upcoming Elden Ring DLC Shadow of the Air 3 to make an appearance at the Game Awards, but don't hold your hopes up. The DLC is still in development and has a quote-unquote little way to go before release, according to From Software producer Yasuhiro Kitao. He provided the update at the PlayStation Partner Awards 2023 in Japan, refuting a recent rumor suggesting an early 2024 launch. Also at the PlayStation Partner Awards, Capcom confirmed plans for more Resident Evil remakes following the success of recent releases for Resident Evil 2, 3 and 4. Resident Evil 4 remake director Yasuhiro Ampo expressed the company's enthusiasm for bringing classic titles to a modern audience, assuring fans they intend to keep making remakes. He didn't reveal the next game in line, fans want Cold Veronica but if you have played all of RE4 you'll see them hinting at RE5. There's a few release date updates tweeted by PlayStation on Friday. The free Resident Evil 4 PSVR 2 patch lets you play through the original campaign as Leon with a unique level of immersion. It launches on December 8 and there will be a free demo on the same date. Capcom also updated that Resident Evil 4 has sold over 5 million copies since its release in March. Pacific Drive The First Person Survival Road Light finally has a release date, offering a unique gameplay loop where you go through multiple stages, repair, upgrade and survive. Out for PS5 and PC on February 22, 2024. Mystical action platformer Ultros from developer Haddock presents an entirely unique world set in outer space where you need to go against an ancient demonic being known as Ultros. It launches on PS4, PS5 and PC on February 13, 2024. And those are the PlayStation stories for today. What are your thoughts on them? Let us know in the comments below, give this video a thumbs up or down to let me know your feedback, check out more on another Sony partnership with a Korean publisher, plus other content you may like as well, and subscribe for more on PlayStation. Thank you so much for watching, my name is Joseph, this is Hyper Games, and let's get hyped!